Hello, welcome to our women's meeting. Let's go ahead and open up with prayer. My heavenly father, I thank you. My heavenly father, I thank you. I thank you. Father, open our eyes that we can see. Open our ears that we can hear. Father, open our hearts like you did for Lydia, that we can attend unto the things which are spoken. Father, turn us from darkness to light, from the power of Satan unto you. And Father, I thank you for a spirit of grace on this meeting. A spirit of grace on this meeting. Father, in Acts 5, they had great grace on them. Father, I thank you, and I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Welcome to our women's meeting. There is a group of women here, all of us, that are endeavoring, and men, that are endeavoring to walk in the Spirit of God. And we are learning, and we are walking, and I am getting testimonies often about how God is ministering his faith, and we, by faith, are walking in the kingdom. Do you know that if you cast out a devil, it says the kingdom of God is coming to you? Isn't that beautiful? Go cast out a devil. Oh, they don't like that. Go cast him out. Now, we are talking now, we are doing a series of how Jesus did it. And I'm gonna enjoy today because this is a time in our world that we really need to hear this message. And we are gonna talk about how Jesus did it, how he walked in God's protection. We are gonna open with 1 John 2.6. And I'm going to go ahead and switch back and forth with these, with these scriptures because I want you not only to hear them, I want you to see them. And a lot of us are watching this program from work or someplace where they don't have the, the Bible in front of them. So let's go ahead and we are going to go to 1 John 2, 6. But I'm going to begin in verse 3. It says, hereby we do know, we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But verse 5, but he that keepeth his words, those are the words of Jesus, in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. And then verse 6, he that saith that he abideth in him, ought himself also to walk even as he walked. He that saith he abideth in him ought also himself to walk even as he walked. One of, the, one of the blessings about this program is that I can show you exactly what the Strong's means. And it means um, under obligation, under obligation. So if we are under obligation to walk also as he walked, then it would be unjust that he walked in a way that we could not walk. That would be unjust. And you know what? Jesus is not unjust. He is not unjust. So the way he taught us to walk, the way he walked in this earth, we are able to walk or he would be unjust to say that we are obligated to do so. And you know, not only that, but the joy of this is, if he said that we ought to walk like he walked, and he would be unjust if we could not walk the way he walked. That includes the weakest of us. That includes the weakest of us, the smallest of us, the lowliest of us. Isn't that beautiful? Now, I want us to go, we are going to begin with, I'm going to lay some groundwork. And I want us first to go to Acts 2, 23. There is an important scripture here that we need to look at. Oops, Acts 2, 23. Verse 23, it says, he being, well, let's begin in verse 22. You men of Israel, hear these words, Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and signs and wonders, which God did. I love how I, I have that highlighted, which God did. Why? Because God did it. Jesus didn't. Remember, we have talked about this. Jesus said he could do nothing while he was on earth. He could do nothing. It was the Holy Ghost in him and the Father in him that did all the works. It says, which God did by him. 
God did the works through him. That is a wonderful thing to get understanding of. Jesus could do nothing of himself. Why is that so important? Because that's the way we do it. We don't have any godly abilities. Our only ability comes through the spirit of God in us. Our only ability. Our only ability. Our only ability comes through God in us. That's just the way Jesus walked. If he said that we are obligated to walk as he walked, he would be unjust if he had anything in him that we don't have. And like we said last week, if we have what he has, and we have the Holy Ghost, and we have the Spirit of Jesus in us if we are born again, and if we are baptized in the Holy Ghost, we have the Holy Ghost. If we have what he had, then we can walk like he walked. It's that simple. Yeah, until you try to walk it. But God is with us and God leads us. Now let's go back to that verse. It says, him being delivered, that's Jesus, being delivered by the determinate counsel. God's deliberate plan. Determinate counsel means God's deliberate plan. God's plan. Not the counsel of the, of the priest. It says him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God. For knowledge of God. Do you see that? God's deliberate plan and for knowledge of God. And then he goes on, you have taken by wicked hands, have crucified and slain. Do you see it was God's deliberate plan and his foreknowledge? He knew in advance exactly exactly how Jesus was going to walk. He knew exactly how he was going to walk. Why? Because he had the whole thing planned. Jesus' life was planned before Jesus ever even came to the earth. In fact, if you read and have understanding, Jesus' life was planned out before even the world was created. And you know what's marvelous about that? So was yours. So was yours. The Psalms say that the Father, his understanding is infinite. Infinite. Do you know what infinite means? No ending. There is no end to God's understanding. God's determined plan, predetermined plan for Jesus and for knowledge. He knew every step that Jesus was going to take. He led him through every step. Isn't that beautiful? And it says that he did the same thing with us. Your life, your life is not a mistake. Your life is not a circumstance. Your life was known before the foundation of the earth. The Lord knew you. And you have Jesus in you. You have the seed in you. If you are born again, you have the seed of Jesus in you. So we are able to walk like Jesus walked. Now, let's go to the next verse. Now we know that God, that Jesus' life was planned from the beginning. We also know that God had a determined plan for Jesus. That he had a determined plan for us. Now I want us to go to the next verse. And that next verse is going to be Ezekiel 28. I want us to see something here. Ezekiel 28. Verse 14. And this beautiful scripture is talking about the devil. It's talking about Lucifer. I'm going to begin in verse 13. It says, thou has been in the Eden, the garden of God. We know that the devil was in the garden of Eden. Every precious stone was like covering. The sardis, the topaz, and the diamond, and the boral, and the onyx, and the jasper, and the sapphire, and the emerald, and the carbuncle, and the gold. The workmanship of thy tabrets and thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Do you see that word created? Lucifer, the devil, Satan, was created. He was created. The Father and Jesus were not. The Father has never had a beginning. 
neither did Jesus. He was with the Father from the beginning. It says that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. There were two gods, and they had no beginning, and they will have no end. But Lucifer, Lucifer, that devil was created. You know what that says? God created Lucifer. He knew from the beginning what the devil would do. He had it planned. It had it planned. In another place, it says iniquity was found in thee. No surprise to God. We must understand that we serve the God that is above all gods. Not only the God that created the world, but the God that created the heavens too through Jesus. Everything that was created, everything, both visible and invisible, was created by the Father through Jesus. Jesus created all things, everything we see and don't see, and he created the devil. He created the devil, and he created you, and he has a deliberate plan. Now, we know, we know that the devil did not want Jesus to go to the cross, but what we're going to see today that in all his workings to try to stop it, he couldn't. He couldn't. If there was anything the devil would have done, it would have been not to let Jesus go to the cross. Why? Because then that made a whole, a multitude, a multitude of Jesuses. And that multitude of Jesuses are going to put him in the lake of fire. For he will burn forever and ever and ever. He did everything he could not to have Jesus go to the cross, but he didn't get it done. Why? Lucifer was created. God was not. Jesus was not. The spirit in Jesus was from the beginning was always. Now, let's go to the next one. How? How could Jesus walk? Now, remember, we we, we've taught it in the last couple of weeks. Jesus emptied himself. That is in Philippians 2 of all his godly abilities. He emptied himself and became a man just like you and I. If he said that we are obligated to walk as he walked, then, we, then he had to walk like we can walk. If he walked any higher than we, then he was unjust to say that. But he's not. So we can walk just like Jesus walked. And Jesus walked on earth just like you and I walk. He was tempted. He had feelings. He had a physical issues. He got tired. He got hungry. He had to go to the bathroom. He was a man like you and I. Now, how could he have God's protected on, protection on him if he walked as a man? Let's go to the next verse. I'm going to go to John 6. John 6. And I'm going to go to verse 29. And it said, Jesus answered and said unto them, oh, no, that's not right. John 8, forgive me, it's John 8. Read that wrong. John 8, 29. We're going to begin in verse 28. Then Jesus said unto them, when you have lifted up the son of man, then shall you know that I am he and that I do nothing of myself. We talked about that just a little earlier. He couldn't do anything. He couldn't do anything. But as my father has taught me, I speak these things. And look at verse 29. And he that sent me is with me. The father has not left me alone. Why? Why? For I always for I do always those things that please him. Jesus walked like you and I have to walk. And look what he says here. For he that sent me is with me. That's the father. The father has not left me alone. He was always with Jesus. Why? For I do always those things that please him. Jesus had to do 
the Father's will. He had to obey the Father. He had to walk just like we walk. So he had to walk in a man's body with a man's soul. And the only way he could get God to work for him was to obey God, just like we have to, because he would be unjust. So when Jesus always did what pleased the Father, the Father was always with him. It's the same thing with us. Do you see the importance of obedience? You're going to see right here that obeying the Father and always being his, in his will and doing the things that please him kept Jesus out of trouble. But not only kept him out of trouble, kept him alive kept him protected until the father got him where he needed to go. And that was the cross. The father absolutely made sure he went there. And we know that all along the devil didn't want him to go there. You know, if you read Luke 2, when it talks about the birth of Jesus, the first thing that happened to a newborn Jesus, the God that was in heaven, that laid down all his godly power and became a baby, King Herod tried to kill. King Herod went after to kill him. The devil in King Herod wanted that baby dead. Why? Because that baby, that body, that body, that baby was in. The spirit of Jesus was in, was your and I sacrifice. That baby born was going to be the sacrifice for the whole human race. It was going to take away what Satan had done in Adam. No wonder Satan in King Herod tried to have him killed, but he couldn't get it done. He couldn't get it done. Do you hear that? He could not get it done. Why? Because Jesus, the Father's deliberate plan was to get Jesus to the cross. Now we're going to take a look at a couple of the examples of Jesus. Jesus and how the Father protect him. I want us first to go to, we're going to kind of run through these verses. I want us to go to first John 7. And that's going to be verse uh, 30. And this is when Jesus was in the temple. So he had all the Pharisees and all the, all the guards and everybody around him. And it says, uh, let's begin in verse 28. Then cried Jesus in the temple as he taught, saying, You both know me, and you know whence I am. And I am not come of myself. But he that sent me is true, whom you know not. But I know him, for I am from him, and he has sent me. And look at this. And then they stopped to take him. They wanted to arrest him. But no man laid hands on him. Why? Because his hour was not yet come. They couldn't get to him. The father's deliberate plan and foreknowledge, they weren't going to get him. That's the power of our God. They couldn't get him until God wanted him to be got. Let's go down a little further to verse 45. And it says, then came the officers to the chief priests and Pharisees. And they said unto him, why have you not brought him? They sent him to arrest Jesus. And the officer said, no man spake like this man. Do you see why they couldn't get him? Isn't that beautiful? Now let's go to verse 20 in chapter 8. I'm going to begin in verse 19. And then they said unto him, where is thy father? And Jesus answered, ye neither know me nor my father. If ye had known me, ye should have known my father also. And these words spoke Jesus in the treasury that was part of the temple, as he taught in the temple. And no man laid hands on him, even though they wanted to. Even though they wanted to. Do you see that? They wanted to arrest him, but no man laid hands on him, for his hour was not yet come. Do you see why we want to obey God? Do you see why we want to do those things that please him? Because he'll protect us. Let's go down to verse 59. And then let's go to verse 56, Jesus speaking. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. He saw it and was glad. 
And then the Jews said unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? And Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. If that's not going to make somebody angry, the religious leaders angry, Jesus saying, I am, before Abraham was. Then they took up stones to cast at him. Now they're going to get him with stones. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. They couldn't even see him. Do you see the ability of God? Let's go down to chapter 10. And we're going to go to verse 39. And it says, therefore, he sought again to take them, but he escaped out of their hands and went away again beyond Jordan to the place where John baptized. And there he stayed. And let's go to chapter 12. Verse 36. I hope you're looking at these verses because you're seeing right now, this didn't happen once or twice. This happened a lot. Now I'm going to begin in verse 35. When Jesus said unto them, yet a little while is the light with you. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whither he goeth. While you have the light, believe in the light, that you may be children of light. These things spoke Jesus and departed and hid himself from them. Do you see there? You know, I ran into people, I heard them speak when I first came into the charismatic movement. And they would say, you can't touch me, devil. And they would stand up and they would say, I'm blood bought. I'm, was it baptized in the Holy Ghost? They would go through this whole list. I'm justified, sanctified. You can't touch me. Well, look at what Jesus did. He departed and hid himself from him. He didn't stand up to them. Why? The spirit led him to get away. Remember, everything that Jesus did was the spirit of God in him leading him. And Jesus knew by the spirit, it's time to go hide yourself. And he did that. He didn't walk proudly. He didn't walk like he was something very important. He followed the spirit of God and he went and hid himself from him. And let's go look at another one. Um, let's go look in John 7, verse 1. That's another, this is another example of this. I want us to see the humility of Jesus walking in the spirit. Verse one, after these things, Jesus walked in Galilee for he would not walk in Jewry because the Jews sought to kill him. The spirit of God said, don't go. The spirit of God told Jesus, don't go. I don't know if you've had many times, but I've had times where God would say, don't go. Just stop me. Dole has a, a friend that has a wonderful, wonderful testimony about his own son. His son, uh, the man was a friend of Dole's, baptized in the Holy Ghost, born again. I do not know what the son was. But the son had gone on a trip and he went to Florida. And he was to, to get on an airplane, a jet, and come back home to Oklahoma. And what happened was, when he went to go get the ticket for that airline to get on that particular flight, the spirit of God told the son, not the father. The father had no communication with him. This was back in the eighties. The, the spirit of God told the son, don't get on that plane. Don't get on that plane. And you know what? The son didn't. He changed his schedule and he went on a later flight. But when he got on that flight, what he did not know was the flight he was supposed to be on went into the ocean. The father in Oklahoma had no, uh, he heard that the flight that his son was supposed to be on had gone into the ocean. He had no communication. He didn't know. You know what? The son was on another flight and didn't know about the accident until he landed. And then he called his father. I have an even better testimony than that. My own father was dismissed, uh, um, dismissed, discharged from the Navy in Japan. So he was to have a flight to, to back to the States. 
and he got on the flight. There were 50 guys on the flight, all going back to the United States. Everyone happy their, their term was over. They got to go back home. Well, when everybody was seated, one of the captains went on the ship, went on the plane, and he said, we have a man here. He has an emergency back in the States. Would anybody be willing to give up their seat? Nobody moved. Everybody wanted to go home. But the Spirit of God moved on my dad. And my dad said, I'll give up my seat. And he did. He gave up his seat and he got off the, the plane. If you look it up, in the 1950, I think it was 1954, I may be wrong, but anyway, that plane went into a mountain in Hawaii and everybody on board died. My grandparents knew that he was to be on the flight out of Hawaii, out of Japan, going through Hawaii. They heard that the plane had crashed. They didn't have the communications we had today. They didn't even have a phone in their house. So what happened? My dad didn't come home. They didn't get, a, the neighbors didn't get a call from my dad that landed in San Francisco. Why? My dad had gotten off the plane and he got on a boat, one of a Navy ship that took three weeks to get to California. Nobody knew where he was. But my grandmother said to the cousins and the, and the brothers and the sisters, God knows where he is. And God will bring him home. Thank you, Grandma. So they got together every day and prayed. Three weeks later, three weeks, no body, no coffin, no nothing from the Navy. Three weeks later, my aunt picks up the phone and it's my dad from San Francisco. Hey, I'm in San Francisco. I'm going to catch a flight home. Can you imagine the joy in that house? That's our Jesus. That's our father if we obey him. If we do the things that please him, he is obligated to take care of us like he did Jesus. He is obligated, not only obligated ladies to take care of us, but our children, our children if we will do the things that please him. Amen. Now, let's go. Let's go to um, let's go to the last. I'm going to go to John 19. Chapter 19. And I'm going to go to verse 9. These are some powerful scriptures. This is Jesus arrested. You know what's amazing about this? I want you to think about this. It says God's deliberate plan. And like I said, if he did this for Jesus, he will do it for us. God made sure that Jesus got to the cross because that's what Jesus said. He said, this is the whole reason I came. God made sure that Jesus was gonna get to the cross. The devil tried to kill him as an infant. The devil was all the time with him, trying to get him arrested, trying to get him killed. You know, even in the garden, even in the garden, if, if, if Satan was ever going to kill Jesus, he was going to get him before he went to the cross. Our salvation, our justification, our forgiveness, the law, um, the law put away, all the curses of the law taken on the body of Jesus. If, G if the devil was going to get him, he was going to get him before he went to the cross and he couldn't stop it. You know what else? The power of God. Jesus' own soul had to work in the garden, had to get his own soul. Jesus' soul did not want to go to the cross. Can you blame him? The man could read. He could read where he was going to be marred more than any man. And he still had the soul of a man. He told the disciples, my soul is extremely grieved, sorrowful, even unto death. I want to die in the garden. You and I salvation was one in the garden. It was one when God made him, Jesus 
to be like us, to walk like us. And that soul rose up in him in the garden he didn't want to go. And he had to pray the soul down and the spirit up so he could obey God. And the love and the grace and the mercy of God, nobody could touch Jesus while he was praying. It says an angel was sent to strengthen him and he prayed in agony. Drops of what looked like blood coming off of him, praying through so he could even go to the cross. Do you see the love of God? That was God's lamb in the garden. That was God's lamb. That was our sacrifice in the garden. And God was going to get him to the cross. And Jesus was able to pray through. The devil couldn't even come get him too soon. God kept Judas away. And it says that Satan was in Judas. God kept Judas away until Jesus prayed it through. Why is that so important? He will do the same for you. Jesus came to make a whole bunch of adopted children. And he will do the same for you and I. He will not send us to do something that we cannot do. And he will make sure that there is time, that there is prayer, that there is everything we need to do to get us there. Oh, he is long suffering. It says that he is with us even in our rebellion to get us there. We have a God that loves us and he will treat us just like Jesus if we will use our faith and do the things that please him. Now, let's go back to that verse because there's a profound truth in it. Verse eight, when Pilate therefore heard that saying, he was the more afraid. And this is what, well, let's go to verse seven so we know what he's talking about. The Jews answered him, and this is the Jews and Pilate talking. It says, we have a law and our law, he ought to die because he made himself the son of God. Pilate therefore heard that saying, he was the more afraid. And went again into the judgment hall and said unto Jesus, Whence art thou? But Jesus gave him no answer. Why? Jesus is going to get to the cross. Pilate wanted to let him go. It says more than one place. Pilate tried to let him go. But you know what? God wasn't going to let him let him go. He wasn't going to let him. Why? You and I needed to be justified. We needed our sins forgiven. We needed the curses of the law taken away. We needed the law taken away. We needed a vessel that could hold the Holy Ghost. God for sure wasn't going to let Pilate let him go. But look at this truth. And Pilate therefore said, heard that saying, he was the more afraid, and went in again into the judgment hall and said unto Jesus, Whence art thou? But Jesus gave him no answer. And Pilate said unto him, speakest thou not unto me? Knowest thou not that I have power to crucify thee? And I have power to release thee. And look what Jesus answered. Jesus answered, thou couldest have no power at all against me. Except it were given thee from above. Therefore, he that delivereth me, delivered me unto thee, has the greater sin. I want you to look at that again. Look at it with your eyes. Thou couldest have no power at all against me, except it were given thee from above. Except it were given thee from above. Do you know you can walk that same way? Do you know you can walk in a job? Or everybody there but you wants you fired and they can't fire you. I've been there. I have been there. A whole administration would have loved to have fired me and they couldn't touch me. Why? They had no power at all except it were given them from above. So if you're fired, hallelujah, then there's a better job. I had a conversation once with um, my, the other grade teachers that I was, I was teaching with. 
And we knew that the administration would have really liked to have wiped out the whole grade level, all four of us teachers. They weren't happy with us. And one of the girls said to me, one of the teachers looked at me and she said, aren't you afraid you're gonna get fired? She knew, she knew. You know, I had a, I had a vice principal that I thought was a friend and some, one of the, uh, one of the uh, technical people came to me one day, I was saying something about her. And that woman looked at me and she said, Kathy, she's not your friend. She wants you fired. It was a surprise to me. She wants you fired. So what did I begin to do? I began to bless her. I began to pray for her. I began to pray for all of them. And at this lunch table, the, the, one of the teachers looked at me and she goes, aren't you afraid you're gonna get fired? I said, no, I'm not afraid. I said, if I get fired, then there is another place for me. God is my source. God should be your source. If your source is your job, then God is not your source. If you think that your money can only come through your job, God is not your source. God needs to be our source. He was Jesus' source. God is my protection. Nobody can touch me unless the Father allows it from heaven. I have the same ability the same protection on me that i had that jesus had why because i endeavor to do always what pleases the father and you know what there's enough mercy and grace that if i don't get it right that's okay he still protects us oh he protects us even when we're not it says there is a an acceptable a good and a perfect will of god even when we're working on the acceptable god will protect us god will protect you if he did Jesus, he is obligated to do it for us if we endeavor to walk like Jesus walked. And you know what? There will be a day that we will walk perfect before God. That's what Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection bought. We will be led by the Spirit. It is a wonderful thing to know that we are helpless, that there is nothing we can do. I told Dole the other day, you know, they, they, they told my parents when I was in school that I was considered very intelligent. I said, I think I have just enough intelligence to realize how stupid I am. That's a beautiful place to be where your only hope, your only source, your only trust is in the Father. That's where we need to be so that that Holy Ghost leads us, that Holy Ghost stops us, that Holy Ghost sends us where we need to go and not a day before. Amen. That's what we are after. We are after that protection. And in this time, in these days, these perilous times, and they are now perilous. These are the last days. We want that protection. We want Psalm 91 protecting us. We want the protection that Jesus had. We want where we can walk right through a crowd that wants to arrest us, that wants to stone us, and they don't even see us walk through the crowd. That's what Jesus had at Capernaum. He, we have the same God protecting us. That's what we want. It pays to do the will of God, and it pays well. And it doesn't pay to do the will of God part time. God is not a hobby. Christianity is not a hobby. It is not something you just do on Sundays. Then your protection might be just on Sundays. The will of God is a life. It's a life. It's where you lay down all your flesh and you let God take control. It's a life. But you know what? It's a life above this world. You are in this world, but you are not of this world. Your life, the principles that work in this world, when you are walking with God, don't apply to you. They don't apply. Gravity doesn't apply. That's Jesus when he walked on the water. Uh, the the um, Money comes when you don't deserve it. Why? Because that principle that Jesus became poor that we might be rich, that applies. 
nothing else applies. The principles of this world will not apply to us if we walk in the spirit. That's where we want to be. Amen. And how do you get there? Well, first, the first thing you need to do is you need to have the spirit of Jesus in your heart. I love how the devil just loves to make my nose itchy because he wants to distract me, but he's not going to distract me. You have to have the spirit of Jesus in your heart. How do you do that? I'll pray with you. I'll pray with you. And we will get the spirit of Jesus in your heart. We know that that'll happen because that's what God wants to happen. That is the deliberate plan for you to get the spirit of Jesus, the seed, the seed in you. Let's pray. Pray with me. Jesus, come into my heart. Be Lord of my life. Take my life. Be Lord of it. Jesus, lead me. Guide me. Fix me. And I ask this in your name. Amen. I thank you for the power of Jesus in you right now. That you might know that you know that you know he's in you because he is. If you ask, he will do that which you asked. It says all that call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And now to walk with that ability to walk like Jesus walked, you need to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. You need to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. If you want to be baptized in the Holy Ghost, you have to be born again first. And if you just became born again, you're born again. You've got that seed in you. We can baptize you. The Father can baptize you in the Holy Ghost. That's why Jesus went to heaven, so he could send the Holy Spirit, so we could walk just like he did. It's a gift. It's a gift. You don't pay for it. You don't have to wait on it. It's a gift. And it's a gift. It says if we ask the Father for the Holy Ghost, he will give it. You won't get something weird. You'll get the Holy Ghost. Let's pray. Father, I thank you. I thank you now. I thank you for the spirit of God. I thank you, Father, for that Holy Ghost. I thank you, Father, for the Holy Ghost. I thank you. It's a gift. Father, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you for those that want the Holy Spirit. Father, open their hearts now and let the Holy Ghost come in. Father, open their hearts now and have the Holy Ghost go into them now. I thank you, Father, that spirit, that gift of Jesus, the spirit of God, go in them now. Father, I thank you that it fills them. Father, I thank you it fills them. I thank you that Holy Ghost fills them. I thank you. Father, I thank you now that you baptized them in the Holy Ghost. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. You baptized them in the Holy Ghost. I thank you. He is going in them now. Glory. Thank you. Now I want you to open your mouth. And I want you to let out the words of the Holy Ghost that is now in you. I want you to speak in tongues. I want you to open your mouth and let those tongues come out. I'm going to uh, pray with you in the spirit. Let's open your mouth. Nobody's around you. Open your mouth. And it may sound silly when you begin, but that's okay. It'll, it'll go into a beautiful language. I get thanks. Cut us, shake, K, yay. Ha, shake, K, yay. Ha ko ye se ke ye sara kiete. Hara siete ko so ko ye. Ha sara kiete se. Hara kondo siata kandase te. Ha koro siete. Those are the words of the Holy Ghost. Those are the words from the Spirit of God going from your heart to the Father. That's what the Holy Ghost is. That's what the Holy Ghost does. He prays with a language that you don't know so that it can be heart to heart and your brain is out of the way. 
Amen. Keep praying that way. Keep praying in the Holy Ghost. And now I'm going to ask, does anybody here need prayer? Does anybody here need prayer? Oop, sorry, forgive me. Does anybody here need prayer? I'm going to ask you to raise your hand. For some reason, I can't see that. I get thanks, Jesus. I get thanks. I get thanks. I get thanks. All right. Okay. I get thanks. Father, I thank you for the power of God. Father, I thank you for the power of God. I thank you. I thank you for the power of God on them now. And all of the rest of you, would you pray with me, with them? Let's join our faith together. Let's join our faith together. We can do a lot of things with our faith together. Our mutual faith will comfort these that need prayer. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We have seven that need prayer. Father, I thank you for the power of God on them now. Father, I thank you. I give thanks for that resurrected power on them now. Father, I thank you for the resurrected power of Jesus on them now. Father, I thank you for the resurrected power of God on them now. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead on them now, Father. I give thanks. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead on them now. I give thanks. That same resurrected power on Jesus that raised him from the dead be on them. I get thanks for that power. Father, I get thanks for that power. I get thanks for that power on them now. I get thanks for that power on them now. I get thanks for that power. I get thanks for that resurrected power on them now. I get thanks, Father. It's all for your glory. It's all for your glory. I get thanks. It's for your glory, Father. I thank you. It's for your glory. No one else's glory. Your glory. I thank you for that power on them now for your glory. I thank you, Father. I thank you for your glory. I thank Thank you, Father, for your glory. I thank you, Father, for your glory, Father. I thank you. I thank you for your glory, Father, for your glory. I thank you for that power on them now. I thank you. I thank you for your glory, Father, for your glory. Amen for your glory. Come out of there in Jesus' name. Come out of there. Come out. Loose them in the name of Jesus. Loose them. Loose them for your glory, Father. Loose them. Loose them in Jesus' name. Loose them in Jesus' name. Loose them. Loose them. Loose them in Jesus' name. Loose them now in the name of Jesus. Loose them. Loose them. Loose them, loose them, loose that spirit now in the name of Jesus. You divination, come out, come out, come out, come out, come out for thy glory, Lord, come out for thy glory, Lord, come out in the name of Jesus, come out in the name of Jesus, come out. For thy glory, Lord, come out in the name of Jesus. Come out, come out, come out, come out, you wicked thing. Come out in the name of Jesus. For your glory, Lord, come out in the name of Jesus. Come out, 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 come out. Come out in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Come out in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. You keep saying thank you. 
and it'll all come out. You keep saying thank you. And you can always take the recording of this and play it over, over, over again and take the anointing off of it and get clean. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Father. I just thank you for what you've done today for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. See you next week.